Hi everyone. Recently, a um, very cool function has been added to Opus Modus, which is called diatonic chord. And as luck would have it, we see the documentation of it right here. And what a diatonic chord allows you to do is uh, specifying a chord progression using the diatonic chord symbols and um, key signatures. So we see an example of that right here. We have the function diatonic chord and it takes a list and we define the key signature. In this case, it would be um, C major. If we do C M, it would be C minor. And then we choose the chord degrees that we want to choose that we want to use. Now, if you're completely unfamiliar with this, um, <laughs> you're, you're a little bit out of luck because this is uh, sort of an established music theory kind of approach to working with chords and um, thinking about chord progressions and movements within a progression. And the, um, so, so it's a little bit out of the scope of this video to explain all of that. But very basically, we choose scale degrees. So if we're in the, in the scale of a C, in the key of C, the first one would be a C chord, the four would be an F chord, the five would be a G, and then back to the C. And that's because we count within the scale that we provide. So if we do that, we end up with a progression that sounds like this. And here we can do the same, or actually a slightly different thing, a one, five, six, four progression. In this case, in the key of G. Now, if we take a look at the uh, documentation, we can see that the first thing we talked about, those are the, the actual symbols that we want to use. And we have a couple, a couple of other options here. We have inversions um, and we have uh, drop voicings, um, which allows us to specify a leading voice um, and we can sort. Let's first go down through this document a little bit. I would highly recommend you to read this when you want to work with this function. And especially at the end, we have um, a very important section where we see the chord symbols that we can use. So if we choose a major key, um, which we have done in this first case, these are all the options we can choose for the one chord. So these are different types of inversions. In some case, um, we can create seven chords or ninth chords, uh, dominant one chords, etc. And this is true for all the skill degrees. So um, we have the two chords, the three chords, the four, the five, the six, and the seven. And then we have some extra options, borrowed chords. Um, so this is for modal borrowing when, let's say, you are in a C major progression. And the in that case, the, um, the four chord, for example, would be major, but we can actually borrow the four chord from a minor key. Um, which would make it F minor. So to just give you a very quick example of that, um, if I wanted to have a regular progression with a regular four chord, we could do this, which actually we already did. But then if we want to do some modal borrowing for this chord right here, we can go to this um, one four minor by just adding the M there. And then we get the minor F chord. Right, so we can do some modal borrowing there. Um, keep in mind that when we are working with, um, usually with the sort of classical harmony and uh, with functional progressions, um, we usually type a capital letter or we use a capital letter to, to show a major chord and lowercase would be a minor chord. This is not the case here in Lisp. We can make these both look like minor chords in the traditional sense but they will still follow the same rule. So it will actually be a major. Um, I'll get back to this topic uh, in a little bit. So that is the very basic, the, the essentials of it. Now, um, as you saw already, we can also invert chords um, using our um, figured, figured base notation, uh, a concept you might be familiar with, which shows the notes of the chords that we want to um, show up above the base notes. It basically shows us the inversion. So you can see an example of that here. We have our inversions, we have a one, six, four chord. And um, you can see that for the five chord here as well, you can see that they're inverted in different ways. So one of the chord notes will be uh, drop down an octave. And 
this is one way to work with inversions, um, but we also have a special parameter for this, which is simply called inf. And um, with this, we can choose either a first, a second, or we can choose a zero for a root position and then a first or a two for a second inversion. So to take a look at that, and you can see that the order of the chord notes has been changed. So let's actually make this um, a C major scale. And then we can see that we have our one chord here and it's inverted to minus one, which in this case means that the G, which normally would be here, is going to be dropped down an octave. Now you can see that these other inversions, they uh, sometimes span more than an octave. And that's because by default, there's no uh, sorting for this. So the inversion will be correct, but it might drop to uh, a different octave. And this is left this way because it's a very fun way of experimenting uh, with chords. You can, you can get really nice progressions using this. However, if you don't want that, you can um, apply the sort is true argument to that. So then in this case we have, let's put uh, both of these to C actually. So you can see we have two identical progressions here and here. And the first one doesn't use the sort keyword. And the second one does. So all the chords in that case will stay within the span of one octave. So that is for inversion. So inversions, um, again, basically means we take one of the notes of the chords and we're going to drop it down. Now, there's another um, manipulation, if I can use that term, we can apply to a chord, and those are drop voicings, which um, for jazz players should be very familiar. Um, with drop voicings, we usually start counting from the top note, and then um, if we have, for example, a drop two chord, we take the second note from that and drop it down an octave as well. So let's take a look at that. Um, we have here a progression again in C major. Um, let's start with a regular one chord. All right, and um, um, what we can see is that the third of this chord right now has been dropped an octave. So that's for one. Now, if we want to go further, we want to make this into a seventh chord. So let's choose a one seven here, which should give us a major seventh chord. And you can see that again, this G is dropped, but now we also have the option to um, go a little bit further. And we can also drop the G note down as such. Um, for this, what is important is the leading note as well. This is the note that will be used in the calculation of the ambitus. And the ambitus uh, tries to make sure that everything stays within the range of one octave. So this whole drop voicing thing, this is not new. It's just built into this diatonic chord function because it's a very handy way to uh, manipulate your, your chords. But if you want to um, take a look at that, you can also take a look at the drop voicing function, which has been there for a while. And this explains how this uh, concept works in detail. So it explains um, how the ambitus works and that it, um, with the leading voice, we can define where the ambitus is going to start. So for example, in this case, if I choose um, the lowest note, L stands for low for the leading, you can see that we get an E there uh, all the way at the top. Um, and this is with the highest note. So very fun to play around with. And I have some examples here um, that you are free to use at your leisure. Leisure, I never know which way is correct. Um, we have our famous Pachel Bell guy. And we can see some different ways on how we can use these chords in um, sort of a bigger progression. So one thing we could do is we could wrap this all in a list and uh, we can, in this case, use the same chord progression, which is this one. And then um, we can build longer progressions by sort of combining them together. And this is just playing with the inversion. So you can see that um, we keep the same chords, but we're using different values for the drop and different values for the inversion. And with this, actually, there's one more I want to show you um, that we have right here. This will be a progression for a full song. And we can then simply combine that. 
so we first in this case we first make our list of chords which as you can see evaluates to this long list here and you can see that it doesn't matter when you switch keys we can also do this in uh, in the middle of a progression so let's say so in this case we have an a minor um a scale that we choose and we choose the one chord which would be an a minor four which would be the um, d um, etc but we don't have to do it as such we can also change our key here so normally in a minor uh, three would be um, the c but we can give a different chord here such as g and then we get um, when we play this whole progression we get the third of the g scale in that case all right so you are free to sort of switch the scales along the way um, and then eventually this we can combine in and make OMN. So let's just play that as well for good measure. And now for me, another thing I really like um, that we have available to us right now is sort of Roman numeral analysis or just chord analysis. Um, we don't only have this neo diatonic chord function, we also have our make diatonic chord attribute function, which has a beautifully long name. Um, luckily, you only need to type this once per score probably. But what this allows you to do is it takes, um, you can take that list of chords and then um, you can create the attribute list for that. So um, if we pass this as an articulation to our make OMN, we can actually see the chords on the score itself as such. And uh, this will be sort of automatic, of course. So if I change, if I go to five, seven here for some reason, and then I evaluate that again, and I evaluate this again, It will always stay with the chord. So if you are um, into this this uh, diatonic chord business, which I definitely am, this is usually how I think about my progressions or, or about my whole piece in general, usually. Um, this will be very useful to you. Um, one thing to, to demonstrate that is I um, created a little bit of a score with this as well, where I try to use my diatonic chords as the sort of basic outline of my whole piece, a sort of a, a, a blueprint for my, for my score. So I've set up four different progressions here. And um, after that, I pass these through the diatonic chord function, you can evaluate all of these. And then I am running this to my make diatonic chord attribute, which right now doesn't look so pretty. Let's make it a little bit prettier like this. So this gives me all the attributes for all of the chords, um, which I can then apply to my progression after I've defined my chord length. So with this, we see my full progression. And even when I change the length, the chords will stay um, with their with their original chords so we can clearly see what's happening there um, so that's what i did for this piece um, i did some other things i uh, used my harmonic path again to map some things some some motifs to those chords i'm um, towards the end i'm creating some um, rants some automation basically and then eventually Finally, I send everything to Logic. Now, one thing to uh, pay attention to right here is that if we go to this chord list, we can see that a couple of moments in there, I switch to a new key. And um, to show what's happening in the score later on, to not only see the numeral for that, um, I am also creating a key signature list here within my score, so that after a certain amount of bars, it switches to the new key so that all the clefs within the key get updated properly. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview of this new function. Um, if you're not familiar with how this works, I, I definitely recommend checking out um, diatonic chords music theory in general, um, as well as drop voicings. It's um, something I was a little bit new to as well, but I really enjoyed learning about that. So with that out of the way, I will just um, play you my whole piece. I will uh, record it in Logic. Let me just start that already here. And I'll switch to Opus Modus. And then we can listen to my diatonic chord piece. 
there will be amazing. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.